Hey guys, Greg here from Lens Pro to Go, and this is part two of our three-part series covering the Ari Alexa Mini. In this one, we're gonna be covering all of the menus, the layout, and setup. If you missed part one, go and check that out where I cover the external features, all the different ports and configurations. First, I'm gonna show you guys the layout of the menus and the main features that you'll be using when you're shooting, and then I'll dive a little bit deeper into the further menus and show you actually how to set up each of these settings. When you first look at this menu setup, it might seem a little bit confusing, but it's actually one of the simplest menus I've ever used. Starting right from the top, you have your frames per second, so this is where you can go in and you can adjust your frame rate. You can also delete and add custom ones, and you can set all these presets so you can jump around really quick in between. You can also set your SDI out from right here, so how the SDI is actually processing the footage and sending it out to an external monitor or recorder. Next you have the time code and your project frame rate. Going into here, so you can see your time code, you can set it up so it's record run or free run, or you can jam sync time code. And then we also have the project rate. So this is actually what everything's gonna be playing back at. So if you over crank or under crank, everything's gonna be playing back at 24 frames per second. Then you have some real counts, so you can change which card number you're on just to keep track for a DIT or your editor for when you get into post. Next, we have the shutter angle. Currently it's set up in angle, but you can also switch unit and this is gonna switch it to shutter speed. So now you can see we're at 1 50th. Again, you can add and delete your own presets. So you can add anything from 1 50, 1 50. You can add it to whatever you want, add that to your list, and then you can set that as your shutter speed. Going down to the bottom, we have our EI or exposure index. This is pretty much your ISO. And in here, you also have your ND filters. So this is where you can do your 0.6, your 1.2, or your 2.1 ND filters. Then we have the look, which is what you're actually recording. So we're recording in Aerie Raw, and we have an RE709 LUT attached to it. We can go in here and we can customize our look parameters, and you can also load in some LUTs through the USB on the camera. Lastly, for these buttons, we have our white balance. So this is going in, obviously there's some presets in there. You can white balance through here, rename if you're doing certain scenes. You can obviously add and delete your own presets and you can do the color correction. So if we go all the way through here, this will actually be adjusting your plus and minus hue shift for tint adjustments. Now going more into the center of the screen, we have our Wi-Fi logo here showing that the Wi-Fi is enabled. We have our battery voltage, so that's telling us what the battery power is at. We have our audio meters, which I obviously don't have any audio plugged in, so that's not gonna be showing anything on those meters. Then we have our card information, so our reel, which is the card number, our clip, which take we're on, and then the duration of that last clip. Here it is, six seconds. Going over, we have the runtime left on the card. So we have seven minutes and 27 seconds left of running on this card. And then we have our resolution and our codex. So we're shooting an Aerie Raw 3.4K in four x three for shooting anamorphic. Now that's the basis for what you're gonna need on the shoot day. Now, before you start shooting, you're gonna wanna set up some stuff before. So if we go into the menu from the side here, just by clicking that jog wheel, we can go into the recording mode, and this is where you actually set up what codec you're shooting in. So we're setting up an Aerie Raw, but you can do ProRes 422, 444, however you wanna set it up. Then you can go into your resolution. We're shooting four by three, but you can shoot 16 by nine, 239. If you change your recording codec, you'll also get the option to change some resolutions for some different aspect ratios when you're shooting. Then you have your project settings. So this is where you're setting up. We're shooting in 24P. Same thing as what we saw in the time code settings. Then we have our record mode, which we have set to normal right now. And this is so if you wanna set it up for interval timing or stop motion. So you can do time lapses uh, and you can program all of that directly in the camera. Record beep tally. So this is just telling the lights and the sound what to happen when you push start and stop record. And then pre-record max duration. If you're setting up a pre-record, that's how long it will be. Going down to media, we have erase card, delete last clip, and prepare USB medium. Erase card obviously will format the card, delete last clip, just what it says, and prepare the USB medium. This will actually allow you to put LUTs and stuff onto a USB drive and load them into the camera, also for firmware updates. In monitoring, we have a couple different things. We have our EVF and monitor monitoring. This is the monitor and the EVF is actually what you're seeing through the eyepiece. SDI is obviously the SDI out. 
Frame lines is setting it up if you're going to crop for a aspect ratio after you shoot and that you don't want to do it in camera. Exposure tools is just going to be talking about zebras, false color, EVF waveforms, and however you want to set those up for your viewing. And then color bars is just to send color bars out to calibrate monitors. Then we'll go down to system. And in here, these are just some setup parameters that you want to do ahead of time, setting the date and time, how the buttons and display look, if it's bright or dark. Um, you can also set up your Wi-Fi settings through here. Next is setup. And this is going to be if you're loading preset configurations of the Alexa Mini to this camera. So you already have your project built and you know everything that you want to do. You can just bring it in and you can load up and have those settings all ready to go. User buttons, this is where you're going to program your user buttons. So VF1 and VF2, those are the user buttons on the EVF. Camera user buttons, these are the buttons on the side of the camera, so you can program those to do whatever you want. WCU is the wireless control unit for user buttons. And again, these are just extra customizable buttons that you can use for whatever. Metadata, this stuff is really important and super helpful when you're setting up the camera for the first time. It takes a little while to do it through the EVF, but if you hook it up to the Wi-Fi, you can type in all of this information and it'll go much faster. So you have your production, your production company, the director, cinematographer, camera operator, location, scene, take, user info for whatever you want. And this will really help you once you get into post, planning out and compiling all of your footage for editing. Hopefully this video helped you guys out and showed you how simple and easy these menus actually are. If you want some more hands-on with the menus, Ari has a great simulator over on the website, which I'm going to put a link to in the description below. If you guys have any questions on this, leave a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And check out part three where we actually show you how to rig this camera up for a bunch of different situations like gimbals, tripods, and shoulder mounts. Thanks for watching.